Charles with Cisco DevNet. I'm here with Craig from Infoblox. Uh, Craig, why don't you tell us a bit about Infoblox? Yeah, so Infobox is known as an enterprise DDI infrastructure company. So DDI normally stands for DNS, DHCP, and IP address management. So we have about 9,000 customers, uh, quite a lot of overlap with, uh, with Cisco. So what we find is a lot of requests for enhancements typically come with in terms of integration with, uh, with Cisco infrastructure. So uh, today we've got, we're talking about the integration with uh, Cisco ICE and PX Grid, which is a couple of use cases that customers have asked us to go and take a look at. Uh, thanks, Craig. Well, maybe you could tell us a bit more about the, the use cases that you're helping your, uh, your customers address. Sure. So, there's really two use cases that the customers have asked us to take a look at. So, with the DDI infrastructure, we have access to a whole source of different sources of information. So, this includes the HTTP lease information, IP addresses that have been configured, and networks that we've discovered. And so, quite often, customers spend a lot of time making sure that all that information is correctly configured and managed within our DDI infrastructure. So, for Cisco ICE implementations, if they want to deploy network admission control, what they're really looking for is additional information to be shared from our platform into Cisco ICE so that they can apply more fine-grained policy and really allow the ICE infrastructure to have a more complete view of the world. And likewise, for the information in the ICE infrastructure to be shared back with Infobox. Great. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, PX Grid, so PX Grid provides that bi-directional messaging fabric that you need to use to exchange information. So there's pub-sub mechanisms there uh, and various APIs you can use to exchange information across multiple vendors, exchange that information that, you know, exactly what you want to share and who you want to share with. Uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more about the APIs you use. Sure, so in terms of the APIs we typically use, there's really three. Uh, so the first API we use is the Dynamic Topic API. So that allows us, every time a new device is either created or an IP address is assigned, we can share that information dynamically out to the Cisco ICE infrastructure. Uh, the second API that we also use is the Quarantine API. Now, within Infoblox, we actually have a suite of security solutions that allow us to either break malware control chains, I quite often malware in an infected machine tries to connect back to its mothership, we can block that within DNS. We can also stop uh, uh, basically endpoints from trying to exfiltrate data or steal data out of the, de out of the infrastructure via DNS as well. And also finally, uh, sometimes you get attempts to do denial of service against DNS infrastructure. So having that unique visibility around DNS security, one of the nice things is, is we're able to actually share that information with the, info, uh, with the uh, Cisco ICE infrastructure and allow them to do quarantining down at the switch port. So customers like the fact that they can block it and control it within the DNS infrastructure, but by extending that visibility to Cisco ICE, they can automatically apply quarantining using the quarantine API. And then the final API we use is a subscription API. So that allows us to retrieve the username information that Cisco ICE has discovered to allow our DDI infrastructure uh, administrators to get a greater view of what is going on, a consistent view with what is happening in, in Cisco ICE. Great. So with Cisco DevNet, what we really try to do is help you know, third party uh, customers, developers engage with uh, the technology that Cisco has and create innovations um, using the APIs of our products. And uh, Maybe you can tell us a bit about what you and Infoblox found helpful in engaging with uh, Cisco DevNet. Yeah, so one thing that we found particularly useful was, again, the availability of documentation. Uh, we got a lot of push from customers to do this integration, but where do you really start with a company the size of Cisco? So by using DevNet, we have access to all the documentation that we needed. We are able to use the forums to get an idea of how other vendors actually do the integration with Cisco. So it gave us a lot of different ideas of, of how to go about doing the integration, which was really helpful. And in some cases, uh, we actually were able to start to look at additional use cases, kind of have almost like an amplification effect of this integration that we've done. So one example was integration with third-party vulnerability scanners. A lot of those scanning devices want to be able to know when a new device is on the network. We could of course go off and integrate with each of these vendors individually, but by doing a single integration with Cisco through Cisco DevNet, we were able to identify these use cases and share the IP address information through Cisco ICE and through the PX Grid architecture out to these vulnerability scanners. So we're able to take on additional use cases that we wouldn't necessarily have done uh, independently. So this really sounds like one of those cases where one plus one does equal three and 
through this ecosystem that's evolving and, and growing around PX Grid that we're able to do more and more. So, you know, we're here in the DevNet zone, and uh, you know, the day's just getting started. So, uh, I hear PX Grid has a, a new version out. Why don't we go take a look and, and figure out the next great integration we can do?